Welcome back to the Ocarina of Time Camera Logic mini series. Today's episode, we're going to go over how we can create these sort of target highlight indicators to show us which one we'd be targeting onto. And when we target, this other reticle shows up, which tells us which one we're looking at. This works from every angle, so it always looks at the camera, which I think is a nice uh, added benefit. So if you're interested in learning how to do this, stick around because I'm going over it right now. So just like before, I'm going to get a little cone out and I'll paint this yellow and I'll make it glow. Now we want this thing to show up above the closest enemy, but only when we're in the camera state, the default camera state, so when the camera state is zero. And we don't want it to be at the enemy position, but we want it to be above. So if I copy this enemy tag and move it above like this, and I'll rename this, I've labeled this enemy target indicator position. We only want it to show up above an enemy if it's the one that we could target, meaning we're in the default camera state and this is the closest one to us. What we can do is we'll take an emitter and we'll emit this object from the actual enemy itself. I don't want speed and I'm just going to have it do it once with a max emitted at one. So I'll get a node out and we'll send the active gate into here. And this active gate is what tells us when this is the closest enemy and it's targetable and all that. So I'll go ahead and give this a little icon like this and this will be what will power our emitter. Now if this is ever not the case, then we want to delete anything that's been emitted from this, like so. And I'll go ahead and pass the position of this tag straight into the um, transform of the emitter. So we can see that it's not there by default and when we get close it emits the little highlight indicator and when we're far enough away that it's not being targeted or not targetable, it's not being detected at all, then it goes away. Now that's cool, but I think it looks a little boring, so I'm going to add just a little bit of juiciness to this thing to make it look a little bit better. I feel like juiciness is really important uh, in video game elements because it looks cool and it makes it more fun to play. So I'll get a mover out and I'll place it onto this chip which is on the object itself. And I'm going to have it move upwards like this. I'll go ahead and turn the speed down maybe something like this. And now I'm going to use this signal manipulator to go between negative one and one. And we'll just go ahead and plug this straight into the forward speed on modulate. And so what that'll do is make this kind of bounce up and down a little bit, which I think looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and make it go a little faster. So I'll put this back in here and now we can see how this looks. We're far enough away, it's not there, and when it's targetable, now we have this little icon showing us, hey, we can target onto that. Now we only want this thing to show up when we're in the default camera state. So what we could do is we'll get out a keyframe, and we'll keyframe this thing to not be visible. And this will get powered when our camera state is anything that is not zero. So we'll get the camera state, and zero doesn't actually send a signal, so by default that will be off and it will be visible, but if we ever change camera state, it will be invisible. So we can see this here when we get close. If I highlight this thing, then it's no longer visible, and if I break out, then it comes back. Now that we have that done, let's go ahead and make the reticle that shows which thing we're actually targeting. I'm going to get out a new block here, and we'll go ahead and go into paint mode. And so if I'm using the rule flex here, we can make little triangles like this. This may be too big, but we can always adjust that. Something like this, for example. So we could use something like this. Now if we group both of these things, now we have a nice object here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an extra object for this thing to attach to. 
and I'll go ahead and get a motor bolt out. And so I'll attach the motor bolt from this outside object to the object containing the painting. Now if I turn this motor bolt like this and maybe move it right there, we can see how that looks. So if we turn the speed down, we can see how that looks. That looks pretty cool, I think. So now I'll group these two things together so that it's one big group. And now if we take a tag, we can place this on the camera and we'll use this in conjunction with this and we can place a microchip on here. And so this thing will have a look at rotator. We can see the little reticle is in here. It's right in the center. And so we'll have this thing look at the camera. I'll turn strength and damping up and stay upright. And so if I start time, we can see that it looks at the camera. And so just like the other thing, we only want this to be on when the camera state is at the correct state. So I'll go ahead and get this out and we'll just check that it's equal to two. So if it's equal to two, that goes straight into the visibility. So by default, it's not visible. A couple other things we need to do here. Uh, we don't want these things to be collidable or visible. And so back inside of our enemy, we'll get out one more emitter and this will do basically the same thing. That will power this. This will go into the transform and this will delete the object. The only other thing here is that instead of passing this position, we actually want to use the enemy position. And so now it should be working. So if we come up to this thing, we can see the highlight indicator. And when we target, then this reticle thing pops up and it aims at the camera. So no matter which angle we come at this thing from, say we change angles like over here, this thing will always look at the camera. And so it kind of always looks correct. So that's it for this video. I wanted to keep it nice and light on content since the previous video actually ended up running quite a, a bit long. So in the very next video, I'm actually going to go over how we can switch between enemy targets that are in targeting range without leaving the targeted state. So if we were targeting this middle enemy and we wanted to be able to switch to this one on the right, maybe we could tap right on the right thumbstick or we could tap left on the right thumbstick to switch to this one over here on the left. That way we don't have to break out and do this whole thing. So I hope this is helpful, interesting maybe. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you're new around here, click subscribe. I got a lot of cool tutorials coming out. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. I'll see you next time.